Alright, here we are at the Sanders. We've got pretty much uh, three flavors of Sanders here in the shop. The uh, smaller oscillating spindle sander, a disc sander, another uh, larger spindle sander that I'll show as a separate little picture clip deal, and the wide belt sander. We'll get to that one as well separately because it's totally different. What do we need to wear for this for protection? Obviously safety glasses. Um, make sure you're not wearing any gloves, no loose clothing, because this thing will try to pull in whatever it can, because it spins, it wants to wrap. You know, it'll, it'll grab onto your uh, little strings from your hoodie, pull them right in, and then you get pulled in, and then it sands on your face. And it's just, it's ugly. I really wouldn't worry about earplugs too much with this, Unless you're just wearing earplugs in the shop for general you know, hearing protection. These aren't that loud. They run quiet. The job they're doing isn't very loud. It's not the same as a saw. Uh, what do you look for for pre-tool uh, use and inspection? I want to make sure that this little drum cartridge on here, that it's, it's not too worn down. It's not really plugged with sawdust. If it is plugged up, see there's maybe a little white on here. You can use these little eraser sticks to let it go against, against this as it's running and it'll actually clean it out. It's like a giant pencil eraser and it erases the sawdust out of the sanding cartridge. Same with the disc sander. This sanding disc is rather chewed up. Not looking in all that good a shape. It really needs to be replaced. It's, it's usability. It's done. Also want to make sure that these Cartridges aren't ripped or torn because that will cause them to not work well. Uh, there's actually a rubber cartridge carcass underneath this that if that starts to rub on the piece that you're sanding, you can leave a black mark or a burn. That'd just be a no, no good situation. Also, uh, you want to make sure that on here at the table, you can adjust it forward and back. You want to make sure that you don't have any more than an eighth of an inch between the disc and this edge of the table. Otherwise, a piece of wood or your finger can get caught down in there. This one's pretty good. It's on the ragged edge of being a little too far away. I want to make sure these things are securely bolted down. I can see here, I've got bolts holding them down to the table. They're not really gonna go anywhere. Looks like the whole table moves more than anything else. Uh, if you want to do any angle sanding with these, you can tip the entire table up to get an angle and you can sand to a, a very precise angle. Uh, the disc sander does the same. It tips up and works that way as well. Uh, how do you sand safely with this? Really with this, you don't need any helpers. This is a one man job or a one woman job. You know that. You're in this alone. It's just you and the tool. You need to make sure to feed it in correctly. If you're on the disc sander, it spins this direction. So you want to make sure that you're feeding in onto the left side of the disc. Because then the disc, as it spins, is trying to pull the workpiece down into the table, which is safe. If you're over here, it's going to want to try to lift. It can actually cause it to chatter and bounce. Maybe rip it out of your hands. And it can wreck what you're working on. Uh, with the spindle sanders, they spin in a counterclockwise direction. And that means that you're going to want to feed in on the left side of the cartridge because that way you're actually pushing it into the way that, into the direction of spin. If you try to go on the right side, it's going with it and it's more likely to pull it away, pull it out of your hand. And if you're really hanging on to this and you know everything goes wrong for you, you can pull it yourself into it, and it catches on your shirt sleeve, and then you're wrapped up. It's a bad deal. Uh, another thing to make sure is that there's a little table insert. Make sure that is adjusted to match the size of the cartridge. If we go with a larger cartridge, then we would need to go with a larger uh, little insert. Another example would be this size. As you can see, the cartridges are just stored here on the side of the machine. Not 
that one. Maybe, maybe this one. Nope, not that one either. Well, it's somewhere. It's not really the right size, but you know, you get the idea. They got these little star or fingers on them. That way, it lets the sawdust go down into the table. There's actually a vacuum cleaner, a little vacuum sucker inside of here. It sucks all the sawdust down so that you can see what you're working on. But the purpose of these is to keep your fingers and little pieces of wood from getting stuck down in there. This helps to keep it a little bit safe. Okay, so what can be sanded on these machines? For what we're doing here in the wood shop, it's wood, either pine or a hardwood like oak, walnut, maple, ash. Maybe a little bit of plastics, if we're doing anything with that, trying to make like a little plexiglass window to fit someplace. But we don't want to use it for metal, because that'll just wreck everything and make it all dirty. You can do plywood on this just fine, no issues with that. Well, here we are at the other oscillating spindle sander. As you can see, this one's much larger than the other. It actually has its own base, but it operates in the same way. You still tip the table for doing sanding at an angle. It still has a built-in vacuum. You see the hose right here. This one is just capable of doing a lot bigger work. Right now, I believe this has a four inch uh, drum cartridge on it. So you can do a uh, two inch radius on a part. You know, this thing is going to have a lot more power to it. It's able to take off a lot more material. <laughs> That's wrong. Quickly. Faster than those other ones. Oh, man. It's just another tool we can use. It helps break it up so that we're not so congested when we're trying to sand. That way you can have somebody here, somebody else over there. One of the things I've seen people do before in the past that is unsafe is they're trying to work two at a time on the sander. One on this side, one on this side. And they're just getting in the way of each other. And neither of their projects turns out well. So we just need to make sure to stay separate from each other. Let's talk about the parts of this sander. And the parts of this one are a lot like the parts of the other sanders. You've got the spindle up here at the top. And you got the table. That's all the work's going to be happening. Down here, you've got just the base that's, you know, bolted down. And then over here, you've got an on off switch. This one's actually in the up on position all the time because it's actually controlled by one of the big knee switches we have. And you'll see that those, you know, you've already noticed those are on most of the equipment we've got. Really the only exception to that is either the uh, sliding miter saws because they have a, a switch that doesn't lock on or the table saw, which we'll get to in a little bit. That has a different switch on it because it's all built in to be safe in its own way. All right, here we are, wide belt sander. The way this guy works is that it's got a conveyor that feeds all the way through. It's a continuous feed, so you can just run pieces through. Comes out this side, bring them back around to the other side. Back in it goes. Uh, on the inside of this, is a big belt. It's three feet wide. And it's kind of in a triangle shape when uh, when it's being used. The handle on the side for adjusting the amount of material you're going to take off is over here. See, it says don't go past a quarter to a half a turn. Because if you try to do that, it's going to hog off too much material and it could actually damage your, your piece. It's got a nice big safety bar across the front here that if you bump this, 
it'll shut it down right now. Controls on it, a little, little more involved than the other machines. See, it's got an on off there. That turns on the uh, air tracking. You can read the pressure on that little gauge right there. What that does is as that belt is moving, sliding back and forth as it spins, uh, it kind of shifts things back and forth and makes it stay in a straight line. Uh, the sanding head, you see you got start, you got stop. Uh, conveyor feed, you got start, stop. This dial right here controls the actual feed of the, uh, of the conveyor belt. So that way it can go really slow if you're trying to do a nice light pass on a wide tabletop or you can crank it up to go really quick if you're just going to be taking off a light amount on a uh, on a narrower board of course you got the emergency stop if you have problems you can shut her down over on the back side you got another emergency stop and that's there in case you have a problem back here, if you start to get tangled up in the conveyor belt down below. You know, it's rare, but you can maybe get your finger, your finger under the side of it or in there somehow. Well, if you're having trouble, you just hit that emergency stop. She stops real quick. Just like with the other equipment, it's hooked up to the central uh, the feed, or the vacuum system, it all goes outside. It's a nice machine to use, it does a good job, and it saves lots of time with sanding. This uh, is set up with a 60 grit belt. What that means is that it's the, uh, the coarseness of the finish. Anyway, this is the wide belt sander. Hopefully we'll be back in school, school soon so we can uh, give her a try. See you on the next one.